the name of this pattern that we're tying today is called the Hala Squala. I got that name from uh, from a friend of mine, Justin. He didn't tell me exactly that I could use the name, but uh, he didn't say I couldn't, so thanks, Justin. What we're doing today is we've got a size 12, uh, Dairiki number 280. Um, it's a hopper hook. It's two times long, so whatever your preference on hook is, you can use that. Um, what we're going to start with as far as thread is a UTC 70 and brown olive. Go ahead and get your thread started. Work your way back to the middle of the of the hook and get rid of your tag there. What we're going to be using for um, you know keeping this thing afloat, among other things, is we're going to be using some uh, kind of some open cell foam. Um, this is this is larva lace foam. Um, for dry flies, it's black. It's not as uh, it's not as closed as, as most foam that you know you're going to be tying with. Um, what I like about it is that it's going to allow this pattern to sit low in the water like an actual stonefly or a squala would be. What you want to do is cut yourself a healthy little piece, I don't know, maybe a quarter of an inch long or so, and uh, actually just going to tie it in right about in the middle. What's awesome about this larva lace foam is it really collapses a lot. And uh, to start the pattern off, we're going to be taking the foam back you know, to right about the bend in the hook. And then you can wrap over this foam you tied in just to kind of anchor it down a little bit. And we're going to double the foam over and create a little egg sac back here. So after we've created this little egg sac, you can bring your foam up towards the front of the hook, basically to your hook eye. And we're going to let the rest of this foam just kind of dangle out in front for now. Then you can go back over your pattern here, or back over your foam, make it nice and collapsed. And then the second thing that we're going to do is we're going to get a some uh, hackle. And normally you're going to size your hackle to the size of your hook, right? On this one, I'm going a little bit smaller with my hackle. So this is a size 12 hook. Um, I'm actually using size 18 dry fly hackle on this. Um, the reason being is I don't want the hackle to reach my hook. I'm, I just have the hackle basically representing segmentation and maybe some legs. So um, And it helps break a little surface tension and, and floatability as well too. But the hackle isn't, um, isn't really here for... A designated you know float a floating purpose so we don't need to size our hackle to the size of the hook in fact size 16 size 18 is really what you want to be using on this pattern so I'm gonna tie my hackle in by the stem and then what we're gonna do and just secure right you know in front of that egg sac there and then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, get some dry fly dubbing. This is uh, Nature Spirit in brown olive. So get yourself a nice you know, little dubbing noodle going. And this doesn't necessarily really need to be tapered either. It just needs to cover up your foam. And then we're going to take our hackle and we're going to wind our hackle kind of like you and you would wind hackle on like a bugger just open spirals until we reach the front of the hook and then you can tie that off um, at this point what we're going to do is we're going to add uh, a couple of little clear wings to our pattern. Um, so if you ever look at a stonefly or a squala or a yellow salad or anything like that, they've got multiple wings that fold kind of on top of each other to kind of create the effect of looking like one wing. Well, when they're on the water, those wings will kind of fan out a little bit and create a little bit of a silhouette. So we're going to do that. And, and what we're using is this is a... Uh, it's called uh, Wings and Things Clear. It's by Spirit River. 
and it's got uh, a really slight um, pattern that's overlaid on the top of it, kind of like a wing. Um, these are good to use for, you know, mayflies or or what have you, um, you know, any any kind of dry fly pattern. But I really like it on this pattern because it, it creates a really cool effect um, looking up from the bottom uh, at the silhouette. So I've already pre-cut two of these into the shape, you know, that a wing is on a on a stone fly. So um, I'm not going to show you how to cut these. Just go, you know, on Google and search a squala stonefly or stonefly and look at the way their wings are shaped. Um, I have these ones are actually a little bit long, and I do that, you know, so I have plenty of room to tie them in. And you want these wings to extend just past your uh, egg sac in the back. So just do kind of a loose collecting wrap here. And you're basically going to be tying these in on the top, um, but if you want to, you can kind of slightly offset one to the right and one to the left. I'm tie the second one on here. And you see, it doesn't really have to be neat or anything like that. Now that I've got both of these tied on top, that's going to create the effect of the wing of the stonefly kind of splitting as it as it tries to you know flutter in the water. Cut some of this excess off. And then once again, you can grab just a tiny bit of dubbing and throw it on there just to kind of cover up you know, some of that ugly clear stuff there. Um, at this point, you're going to actually fold your foam over, bring your thread back just a little bit, just however you want the head. And stoneflies have these tiny little heads, so it doesn't need to be big. And you're going to fold your foam over and create your head. Once we have our head formed there, we're actually going to tie in a couple little legs up front here. And uh, for this, I'm just using uh, just some brown uh, rubber legs here. You know, it doesn't really matter. You can actually use, you know, whatever rubber legs you want. I'm just going to put two on either side here. Wrap the legs around your thing and a couple good wraps. Then I'm just going to whip finish this. And then finish it off with whatever you like to finish your flies off with, you know, head cement or you know, loon you. Alright, sorry my camera shut off on me there, so um, <laughs> what you want to do is uh, finish this off with whatever kind of, you know, whatever you like to use, whether that's head cement or loon UV, um, and clip off the excess foam. And there is the Hala Squala. It's worked well for us on uh, the Waihee River over in eastern Oregon for big brown trout. Squalas are starting to come off right now. And uh, it's been a good pattern for us. It works great for just a stimulator pattern as well too. So fish it. Show us pictures. Tell us what you think. And uh, make sure that you subscribe to our video channel. And check us out at uh, keepersoftheriver.wordpress.com. Thank you guys for watching.